Aditya, welcome. Good to have you with us. Uh, you heard Steve's recap of what uh, the Fed said uh, they discussed at their most recent meeting uh, and in light of what they did. How do you interpret uh, the language there? Thanks for having me. Yeah, I think um, the language is consistent with our base case for a 50 basis point rate hike. One thing to note is that the minutes are a touch stale because after the minutes, we've gotten you know the very strong jobs report the very strong retail sales report this morning and the softer than expected July CPI inflation print. So if the Fed looks at that, it can say, okay, well, inflation slowed down just a touch, not just on the headline, but also in terms of the core. And we are seeing uh, the housing and CapEx data suggest that the interest rate sensitive parts of the economy are being affected by Fed hikes. So if they really do want to be data dependent going forward, then I think there is a pretty good case to slow down just a little bit. So, so if they're if they're true to their word and going to be data dependent, the data, Steve says, Aditya it, uh, tells him at least that they may not do another three quarter point; that they might come back to a half point. We just heard from Diana Olick, who who used the word "housing is in recession." Fed acknowledged that quite a bit, the housing being in recession. Uh, uh, the, house, the, the Fed did not say that, sorry. The Fed talked about the housing slowdown. Right. And, and also, Tyler, they brought up this idea, which I thought was interesting, that because of the Fed's communications, which, as you know, is quite extensive, um, that uh, the market, the economy, may be ex responding uh, more rapidly to these rate increases than it has in the past. Uh, just take a step back from this, Tyler. You know, uh, next week we're going to be in Jacksonville. We'll be talking to a lot of Fed officials. I'm kind of realizing, reading these minutes, I have my work cut out for me. There are some differences of opinion on this uh, committee that maybe I wasn't quite as aware of till I read these, uh, these notes. There is definitely a hawkish wing and a dovish wing that has emerged, and I think that may have come out after the 75 basis point hike, that now there's a real, maybe a more intense debate on the Federal Reserve about where they go from here, with many saying that there's a concern about tightening too much. I'm not sure how well that may, be, may have been appreciated. And some are at this maintain, uh, reach a higher level, and, and, and stay there for a while. There are some differences out there, and we have to do some more reporting on this, and thankfully we're going to get a big uh, uh, chunk of that next week out of Jackson Hole. Who would you say has the balance of power, and what does the Fed chair represent in terms of those wings, Steve? You know, I think I think the Fed chair is more likely to be a little a bit more hawkish here. He wants to stamp out inflation and not have it be part of his record as being Fed chair of, of a long and lasting inflation and one that uh, he's, for example, uh, moved to combat and then took his eye off the ball and have it come back. I, I, my, my, my best guess is that's the way Powell feels about it. I will say this. Following Jim Bullard has been an interesting exercise where he says things that feel like they're extreme, then they end up being the center of the committee. In other words, people scoffed at the idea of 75 basis points when he first said it. Well, guess what? They've done it twice now. Absolutely. Aditya, what would you add to that? Where do you think the kind of uh, center of gravity is and where do you think it's going? Yeah, I think the doves, uh, the hawks, sorry, still carry the day. Um, I did say we expect 50 in September, but that doesn't mean that we necessarily expect a lower terminal rate. If anything, the risks from a potential soft landing with better consumer spending data are that the terminal rate goes higher because the chain of reasoning for me here is lower inflation on the one hand means less urgency to hike in the near term. But on the other hand, it means that consumer spending and the broader economy holds up a little bit better, which means there's less conflict between the Fed's two mandates, and so they can keep hiking. So the risks are that we could potentially see a terminal rate of 4%, maybe even higher.